You know, I, 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 I'm meeting a lot of you, and it, it's, it's kind of blowing me away. It's a graciousness, everything. But as I talk to you, and you explain to me your positions, I'm just nodding my head. But I honestly don't understand what you do. Um, I, 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 I tried. I, but I, I thought it was kind of fair enough. You know, where, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah, this is, so that's, yeah, ministers and politicians. We, uh, but um, I'm not the most intelligent guy, not the wealthiest guy, not uh, the most attractive. I don't know, it's debatable. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, I, sometimes I think to myself, I might be the happiest guy on the planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, there, there's days where I go, is it possible, you know, that it could get any better? And it's, it's not, and it's not the circumstances. I mean, my life's been this crazy miracle. I mean, that's, that's amazing that you grew up in a, in a box car. I, I grew up in Stockton. Um, <laughs> 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 um, but I, I look back at my life and everything that's happened, and I'm, I'm just blown away by it all. I'm amazed by it all. I've been married for 21 years. I, and it's not just staying married, but I'm seriously crazy about yeah. my wife still. You know, 21 years, got seven children. Love them all, I know. Sometimes I'm not real. 
I'm not honest. I'm not just laying it out there because I'm so concerned what other people think. And I know some of you deal with this. I mean, and, and it's a battle where you don't want to come to the end of your life and realize you were just becoming what everyone expected of you. Rather than saying, no, this is really who I am. And so the truth is, is no, I didn't get here on my own. I didn't figure it out. I wasn't clever enough. I mean, it's just a crazy thing what God did in my life. Miracle after miracle, and as many great things that there are. Hands down, I will say the greatest moments of my existence. Okay, beyond everything else, the greatest moments of my life, by a long shot, have been those times when I am alone and I pray to God, and then He answers me. I'm not talking about coincidental prayers like, oh God, how did the sun go out today? You know, oh wow, you answered. You know, please make there be eggs at breakfast. You know, it's, it's, I'm not talking about all oh, these little petty, it could have been coincident. No, I'm talking about there have been times when I've prayed things so specific, so specific that it's like borderline scary the way it gets answered. And it's not just, oh, good, God answered my prayers, but I'm like, I'm like shaking, going, are you kidding me? I just spoke to him, and he, he listened to me. I mean, we're talking about the one who is keeping everyone alive right now. You're breathing because of him, and the thought of times when I've spoken to him, and I think, he listened to me. Of all the billions of people on this little planet, and here I am, and he responded to something I said in such a specific way that I literally, I get scared, I, I, I weep, I'm like, are you kidding me? I spoke to God. Man, those are by far the greatest moments of my life. And, and when I have that... Um, I don't know what their motives are. 
and I can't trust them with eternity and forever and the things that matter. And so I've studied this book over and over and over. And as I've done that and I start praying to the God that I read about in this Bible, it's blown me away. It's blown me away. And I just go around asking people even. I mean, I'm in the tender line knocking on doors and saying, hey, can I pray for you? And, you know, I'm in the Bayview District in San Francisco just talking to people in the projects. Can I pray for you? I'm in the financial. Just let me pray for you. I'm talking to you. Just, just let me pray. Because these crazy things happen when I pray. And, and I, I, I've had people even, you know, I'll check back. Like a week later, I go, okay, what happened? And I remember one guy, he, he told me, remember that Bible he gave me? He goes, man, your prayer was answered so specifically. He goes, I was not excited. He goes, I was scared. He goes, you scared me. You told me that God listens to you, but I didn't believe you until it, it, it happened so specifically. He goes, that Bible you gave me, he goes, I slept with it. He goes, I, was, I, I slept like this, shaking. He goes, I, it, this other lady, she, goes, she, she just goes, she goes, get away. You freak me out. <laughs> you, know, you pray for this and this and this, and it all... You're freaking me out. I, I told you. I told you. Man, it's, it's that type of prayer that I want everyone to experience. It's not about going to church. It's not about calling yourself a Christian. It's not about dressing up and going to a service. It's about knowing Him. There's nothing better than this. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so when Jean asked me to come speak to you, I, I thought, you know what? I wonder if some of you struggle with some of the things that I struggle with, where there's so much of this that it's hard to hear this and to, to see this and to go, gosh, you're so far beyond all of this. To just because when people start respecting, respecting you and honoring you and in a sense almost worshiping you, it's hard to humble yourself and remember your place and remember where you came from and remember that you didn't get here by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not breathing today on your own. And uh, man, I got arrogant. I started to lose who I was. But um, I want to talk about prayer. Um, I want to talk about uh, you know, the passage we, we read, which is really the verse for the National Day of Prayer, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where it says, If my people or called by my name, or humble themselves, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Okay? I'll forgive them their sins. I'll heal their land. But that first word, if, if my people will humble themselves, if, is conditional. Okay, I've heard so many times, oh, God hears everyone's prayers. Not true. Didn't hear everyone's prayers. In fact, in the Bible, there are times when God says, like, like in Amos chapter 5, goes, I can't stand the noise of your songs. In, in Malachi 1, he says, man, you're going to treat me like that, and you're going to, you think I'm going to hear your prayers? In Isaiah 58, he says to the people, you're fasting and praying, and I'm not listening to you. He goes, if this is what I ask for you to fast and pray, meanwhile, he goes, you don't care about the poor. You don't care about injustice. You know? He says, you start caring for them. You start feeding the hungry. He goes, watch what I do. You'll call to me, and I'll say, here I am. I love that passage. James chapter 1, which we also read this morning, says, if you doubt, you will not receive a thing. James 4 says, you, you ask and you don't receive because you're asking for your own desires, your own pleasures. 1 Peter 3 says, you better treat your wife as, as a fellow heir to the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. There are many times in the Bible where it says, God's not listening. So I know that's not a very, you know, politically <laughs> correct thing to say. But God doesn't hear some of our prayers. God doesn't hear from certain people. And that's why in this passage he says, if, and I will say, some of what I, I'm a Bible teacher, so I'm going to be offensive. Because this book is offensive. It's, it's not my fault. 
I like people. I, I want to please everyone. I am a people pleaser. But when I decided to be a Bible teacher, that was a choice to either be offensive or deceptive. Right. You know, I mean, that's the only way to teach this book without being offensive is to lie about it. Yeah. Or Teddy didn't just flood the whole earth and kill everyone in it. Um, <laughs> you know, they can all bow the trap, sticking their head out of the yard. Oh, isn't that cute? No, he killed everyone. Um, there are offensive things in this book. You know, start to finish. And this is an offensive passage for some. If. Who does he think he is? He makes the rules. If my people. If my people who are called by my name. I know we live in a time where it's. And, and here I am trying to be careful about my words. Uh, I'm cool. I'm cool with people praying to whoever they want to pray to. Okay, I really am. According to this book, though, it's not going to work. Okay, according to this book, you've got story after story, such as Elijah on Mount Carmel. It's just him and. And there's, you know, prophets, hundreds of these other prophets worshiping this guy called Baal. And he says, what does that contest then? All <laughs> hundreds, all of you, why don't you pray all day long, see if your God can set this altar on fire. Okay? And so it talks about how they're cutting themselves, they're screaming, and Elijah, meanwhile, he's going, pray harder. He goes, maybe your God's on vacation. He literally says, maybe your God is relieving himself right now. <laughs> like, maybe he's in the bathroom. He, this is what he is, and this is the Bible, okay? It's not being mad at God. He, he's saying, keep praying, see what happens, what happens. It says, morning till night, there, per, nothing's happening. And Elijah's just sitting there mocking them. And then he goes, my turn yet? And he gets on his knees. He goes, in fact, why don't you douse that thing with water? Let me just show you what's going to happen. And he just gets on his face and says, God, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, show them who you are. Mm -hmm. Show them that you hear my prayers, that you're the one true God. And this fire comes down from heaven as all the people start going, the Lord he is God. The Lord is the arson or you, the Lord, whoever you just pray to, whoever you just pray to is he's the real one. I mean, it's 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 an intense thing. You know, you you, you read about Isaiah and uh, you know the way he talks about the the idols. He doesn't say, "Oh, that's great that you worship idols." In Isaiah 44, God says, "He goes, you don't get it." He says, how can you not get it? You just chopped down a tree. He says, you cut it in half, and with half of it, you burned a fire. You made a fire. You, you kept you warm. You baked bread on it. Then the other half, you chiseled into an idol, and you bowed down to it and said, you made me. <laughs> so he doesn't just, you know, in a nice, kind way, go, oh, okay, you worship your idols. I'm going to worship my God. He just says, God says, how can you not get that? You chopped down a tree. You, you burned some of it. And then you worship the other half. Like, how does that make sense? It, it's, and then I'll tell you, it's this offensive book where he says, If my people who are called by my name, if my people who are called by my name, you don't just call on any God you want to believe in or create in your own mind or heart because it's just me. And that is a terrible thing to say in a lot of people's minds in this day and age. And I'm not saying that you can't pray to any other. I, I want to coexist in that way. I'm just saying I haven't met anyone who's heard the answer prayers or seen the answer prayers. Um, and I've asked, but tell me. Explain it to me. Let me hear it. 
that's been the message of this Bible. I'm not, I'm not saying that to be offensive. I'm saying that because I want you to experience answered prayer. There's nothing like it on earth. There's nothing like it. And if you're, if you're, if you're praying to this podium or to whatever you believe in or make your own little God and throw it up in your house, I'm just saying I, you're not going to experience it. And I want you to. There's nothing like it, you guys. There's nothing. Look, I, I feel like I've had everything. I've seen like every country, been all around the world, made millions of dollars. Crazy me. Nothing compares. I mean, I, the, the, even the money, I, I even prayed at one point. I was making like nothing. I was like 36 grand a year. That was it, you know? And uh, it was just like seven, eight years ago. And I, I even prayed, you know, God, all these rich people in the church, what the heck? You know, like, they, 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 uh, they spend like all the money on themselves and they throw, you know, a few dollars here or there and want their name on a plaque. Like, I don't get that. If they believe in heaven, and they really believe in eternity, why don't they live like normal people and just give the rest? Because I've seen the needs around the world. It's insane. And I just pray that to God. And then I just flippantly said, yeah, I said, God will make me rich. I'll give it all away. Because I really don't care about money. The next year is when I wrote the book and I made like a million dollars and you're like, whoa, honey, this was crazy. This is what I prayed about. I'm not touching any, I'm not touching a dime. You know? And it's like, we got ready to give it all away. This story. And, and and I'm telling you, it's it's not the money, because we give it away. It's just he heard me. He literally heard me. And it says, No, I'm gonna blow your mind. You know? And let's see if you keep your end of the heart. <laughs> See my old Toyota with missing my caps out there. You know, it's, it's just, hey, because it's like it's not about all this other stuff. It's about God listens to me. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's why I go, man. I think I'm the happiest guy on earth. Mm-hmm. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Yes. Okay, this is not about hey, close your eyes. Hey, God, uh, here's what we want. If my people humble themselves. I mean, you don't just walk into a king's palace back then. You don't just walk into, you see, an earthly king. I was just reading the book of Esther the other day. What a great book is it? But in Esther, you know, when, when the Lord kind of telling Esther, man, go ask the king, he's your husband. Go ask your husband. She goes, I can't just go in there. <laughs> Esther chapter 4, verse 11. She goes, this is not my month to go see him. <laughs> he has not called me in this month. Is that insane? And she's like, you think I can just go into his presence? I'm not this month. I mean, he didn't ask me to come in this month. Wow. And then she finally just goes, okay, I'm just going to go. And if I die, I die. But I've got to do this. And that was for an earthly king, and yet we have this arrogance that just assumes, oh, I am human, so here, hear me out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Man, I'm ta- I mean, as a pastor, you hear people go, when I die, I've got these questions for God. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> here's the oh God, here, you know. <laughs> You're just going to waltz into his presence with the high angels and everyone else and question him. <laughs> this may surprise some of you, but God did not create you to judge him. Okay? <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> it sounds bad, but he literally believes it's his right to judge you. I know. Arrogant, isn't it? <laughs> it's because he created us or something. He just thinks he can set the rules. You guys, this is how, it's, it's crazy how we disrespect sometimes. Oh, yes. You know, I was reading this verse, this is so good. Hebrews, um, I don't know if you ever noticed, you know how there's those verses you, you've read, but you just kind of passed over. Um, Hebrews 5, 7, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. 
Jesus. We're talking about the one and only Son of God. And it says that when he prayed, it was with loud cries, it was with a passion, and the Bible says that he was heard because of his reverence. I'm just reading that for years ago. What? Jesus? You would think, well, he's heard because he's the Son of God. And yet the scriptures are teaching us something. It's something that's been all through Scripture, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. If they'll humble themselves. When's the last time you humbled yourself and prayed? Try to think of the last time you humbled yourself before you prayed. You just took 30 seconds to think about who you were talking to before you actually opened your mouth. When's the last time you did that? Mm. I remember the first time I did it. I remember the first time reading the Bible and, and I remember looking at that passage where in Isaiah 6 where Isaiah, who was a prophet of God, sees God and he says there's these high angels, you know, they're covering themselves up from head to toe and they're screaming, holy, 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 which means he's so far beyond, he's so set apart from us. He says, everything was shaking. He goes, I'm looking up, and there's this throne, and these angels are screaming out his holiness. The whole temple's filled with smoke, and Isaiah just goes, I am dead. Mm-hmm. He says, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips, and I just saw God. He goes, I just oh. came into the throne room of God. These high angels don't even feel worthy to look upon him. They're screaming out how holy he is. And here I am, this gross, sinful, because the moment you see God in his holiness, you're struck with your own sinfulness. And we do that with people sometimes. You know, when you're with someone who's just so, like, they're just walking that right path that you feel dirty just hanging out with them, right? And, and it's just like, imagine a holy God. And Isaiah just goes, I can't believe I saw him. I'm ruined. I'm dead. And I, remember, I realized at that time, you know, I was never brought up with reverence for God. You know, I was taught to just pray, pray like he's your big buddy up there. You know, hey, big guy, hey, big man upstairs. And I remember that passage, reading that passage, and going, that's who I'm talking to? I tried to imagine myself in Isaiah's shoes, like, what do you do when you walk into a room and it says there's this being on the throne and his robe fills up, like, fills up the entire temple, and there's these angelic beings covering themselves up, screaming out his holiness, and the whole ground is shaking. What do you say to that God? Hey, big guy. <laughs> or, I, I've got some questions for you. <laughs> really? I remember just reading that, and I couldn't just kind of casually in my bed, you know, say my little prayers. Man, I got out, I got on my knees, and I started thinking, okay, that's who I'm talking to. Like, I'm talking to you, the creator of all things. Those high angels right now are blown away by your presence. Okay, God, first, here's the truth about me. Here's everything you already know. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for casually coming to your presence. I'm sorry for, for the things I just kind of flippantly said. I'm sorry for the times when I was ashamed of knowing you and I watered down my words because I was in front of important people. God, what was I thinking? I'm sorry for becoming not who you created me to be, but, but what everyone else is trying to create me into. You are God's work. This is what centers me every day. Because otherwise, I'll get distracted with everything else. And it's when I humble myself and pray. Just like Jesus did. And I seek his face. <coughs> they humble themselves and pray and seek my face. When you guys pray, do you really seek his face? Or do you just seek his stuff? You know? Do you even care to know him? Is there any sense of, I know him. I seek him. The psalmist says in Psalm 27, this one thing, one thing I'll ask, one thing I seek after, I just want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and the gaze upon his beauty. This is the one thing I ask for God. This is all I want is just to know you. 
I just want to be in your presence every day. I just want to know that you and I are, are, are like this. Man, if I could get a transcript of your prayers over the last month, what would I see would be the one thing you asked for? Was it to know Him or do you even care? To know Him. I mean, that's the greatest command. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And for too many people, prayer is like a means to an end. Man, it's like, man, maybe if I pray, I can get this. Maybe if I pray, I can get this. And now we even have churches where people go, man, if you follow Jesus, you can have this and this and this and this. It's like, no, if you follow Jesus, you can have Jesus. <laughs> you know? Well, do you know some people are just blown away that they know you? Mm-hmm. On Monday night, my wife and I uh, were invited to the U2 concert, you know, in, in San Jose. And uh, beforehand, we were asked to go in the green room and meet Bono. And uh, my wife's like, Brian, that's the first time I've ever seen you asked to take your picture with someone. Bono, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, 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 in our life where we go, man. But, you know, after meeting, it's like, that's a good deal. <laughs> I know the guy that made him. <laughs> I know the person. You know, it just brings everything back to the perspective and humbling yourself and seeing his face is coming. When's the last time you just took even one minute humbled yourself before the Creator? I just want to know you. That's the greatest honor. I'm just seeing your face. What an honor to enter into your presence. Because if my people would do that, oh, I shouldn't leave out and turn from their wicked ways. Turn from their wicked ways. If my people will turn from their wicked ways. Yes. times in scripture where God does not listen to people. He does not listen to you. In fact, you do the opposite of what you just asked for. Because you're like, you know, that's what that whole passage of context which we heard read. It's like, you turn from my commands and I'll reduce you to rubble. I'll turn you into nothing. Humble yourself in the presence of God to lift you up. But God opposes the proud. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And when we turn from our wicked ways, when we no longer say to God, you have no right to tell me what's right and wrong. You have no right to tell me that this desire is evil. You have no right to tell me that I can't do this, can't. Who do you think you... When you just say, okay. So let me tell you, there are a lot of things in this book I don't like. There are a lot of things in this book I disagree with. But when I disagree with this book, I assume he is right and I am wrong. That's the way I've chosen to live my life. Rather than saying, okay, this book's off because I disagree with it. Because who's God then? And he says, when my people will turn from their wicked ways, but just changing the rules, try to, you know, somehow soften this up and pretend, oh, it's outdated. It's that when they actually turn, humble this battle, seek my face, call upon my name, because then I'll hear from heaven. I'll answer your prayers, I'll heal your land, I'll forgive your sins. And that, that's where this life that I'm talking about. And I know, I mean, I praise God for. For you, seriously, I, I mean that. And I have prayed for you. I did not just walk up here and start talking. I prayed for you. And I prayed because, you know, the Bible talks about those who will gain the whole world and forfeit their soul. And power is a weird thing. Fame is a weird thing. Money is a weird thing. It does weird things to you. And then when you have this sense that you actually need something from other people, then comes out the schmoozing and everything. Look, I've done it all. 
And I've seen how it can, you can gain the world and lose your soul. And I don't want you to do that because this life is too short. For those who don't know my story, man, I, at the height of all of that, everything going on, I just was losing myself. I said, I gotta get out of here. And I have to have a wife and kids, and just said, you know, I'm just gonna leave America. Maybe I belong in India, and just in a slum somewhere. And, and uh, you know, we traveled through Thailand and China, and then eventually really believe I had the Lord speak to me about being back in America. And, and I said, if I'm gonna do anything different, I'm gonna follow this book. I thought the Lord led me to San Francisco through circumstances that I don't have time for, but I said, you know, I don't want, I don't want this massive thing, you know, I don't want this thing to be centered around me. I want to do what Jesus did. Can I just walk around, you know, and just start talking to people? And he somehow knew his disciples, and he just, you know, can I just focus on that? And, and, and can you just show up the way you did with Jesus? And, and I just walked around in San Francisco <laughs> and just assumed God would bring people to me. I thought, well, maybe I'll go around Fisherman's Wharf and say, Cast your net on the other side of the boat. You know, and, and maybe you know, maybe just miracles or something. But crazy thing, walk around the Tenderloin district. Those who are familiar with it, it's, it's not beautiful. Um, and uh, big tatted up guy coming out of the halfway house, you know. It's like, hey, aren't you Francis Chan? I'm like, no. <laughs> and uh, I, I said, yeah, you know, and he says, I mean, all human beings do it. He's been 12 years in prison and everything. And started sharing his life with me. And uh, he was married, had three kids, had nowhere to live, no child. Didn't know what he was going to do when he came out of prison. And the more I got to know him, I thought, this guy's real. I could see it in his eyes. And I went home and I told my wife, after getting to know this guy, I go, I think we're supposed to treat him like a brother. Um, and we don't have a big place. I already have a lot of kids, <laughs> 1,500 square foot house, but what if we have he and his wife and their kids live with us? And um, I said, this scares me with my little girls at home. I don't know. She's like, well, what do you do? What do you do? I don't know. He says he can do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I said, you know what? Big step of faith, you know, let's, let's just do it. Because, but I, I just, I just thought, oh, you know, this is the stuff that I believed in in the beginning. Yeah. You know, before I became friends, this chance, like, just go talk to people. Just trust the Spirit of God moving in different places. They ended up living with us for like six months. Um, I started just discipling him, my wife, mentored his wife, my kids, mentored his kids, and they're some of our best friends now. Now, two, two and a half years later, he's a pastor. Um, amazing, yeah. He heads up a whole ministry in San Francisco now for guys coming out of incarceration. We open a, a restaurant downstairs that's just cranking, Bully Bully Hawaiian Grill on Third Street. Come see us. Um, but uh, just so I just so love this guy. But again, it's just answer prayer. But it's getting back to who I am. It's just talking to people. Shooting straight. I don't care if it's with you or a guy living on the street. It's like, here's what I believe about God. Here's the truth about Him. And I just want everyone to experience Him because you could miss it. Mm -hmm. And those of you who have, are on the way up, that's, that's when you miss Him. Um, and I don't want you to gain the whole world and forfeit your soul because there is absolutely nothing better than talking to Him, knowing Him and having him actually listen to you. And I dare come into his presence right now. The Bible says that I can come with confidence boldly before the throne because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. In the Old Testament, they did not just casually walk into the Holy of Holies. There was a huge ceremony. They had to cleanse themselves. There were animal sacrifices and everything else because you don't just walk into the presence of God. People who walked in that Holy of Holies, they would tie a rope around them. They would tie a rope around their leg so that if they collapse, they could just pull them out. Because it happened. Because what do you do if a person dies in the presence of God in the Holy of Holies? You can't go in there and get them. You get a whole pile up. Right? Yeah. 
<laughs> it was that rope, and then we pull them out and go, okay, you better get right before you get. Imagine being the next guy. <laughs> Just confessing everything, right? Because <laughs> God was showing, look, you don't just come in my presence. And in the same way in the New Testament, he says, look, it's only because of the shed blood of Jesus. It's only for those who say, you know what, I know I screwed up. I know I don't belong in your presence, but I believe you sent your son as the perfect sacrifice. So we don't have to sacrifice sheep and goats and bulls anymore, but your son died on the cross and took all of my sins upon him on that cross. And I believe he died for me. I believe he rose from the grave, ascended to heaven. He's coming back to judge the world. And that's the only reason why I dare come to your presence is because I'm covered by him. It's not by my good works or anything else, only because of him. I'm going to come into your presence and I'm asking these requests, you know, humbly because of Jesus. And here it is. And then he answers it. Thank you. 